What's going on guys, Bangalina here coming back at you with another video. And today we are back on Madden NFL 18 for the continuation of the Fantasy Rebuild series. Now, I will preface, usually I'm a Giants fan that bleeds blue and red, I guess, red's Giants color. Mostly red. You, you know what, all red. I bleed only red, but I've been crying. Giants blue. Clear. J yeah, just all clear. Whatever color tears are. If there is a color, I've been crying because I'm a huge Giants fan. And what's going on? They suck. They're awful. So, I mean, you know, I've been watching the games. Week one versus the Cowboys, trash. I don't even know what that was. Week two, uh, same deal. I'm like, this is pitiful to watch. And then against the Eagles, to just three quarters of absolute garbage. And then finally, the fourth quarter, where you're like, this is the Giants offense we wanted the entire season. Choke the game. Terrible punt. You know, shades of Matt Dodge. I'm not even going to talk about that. It's always the fucking Eagles, dude. Can, can no one punt against this team? You know, Eagles, because they fly, you know, control the air and where the ball goes. I don't know, dude, but something's up. Anyway, I'm going to rebuild the Giants the only way I know how, which is get the fuck... Ben McAdoo out of New York. That was a poorly structured sentence, but you guys get my point. Ben McAdoo's been awful. You know, and I can only say that so much. He's been absolutely terrible. When Tom Coughlin was the head coach, Ben McAdoo, I think was a great offensive coordinator. He's still calling the plays, but now he's like, third and eight. Hmm. This offensive line's really shitty overall. What could we HB draw? Stopped in the backfield. All right, he's like, maybe that'll work if we call that and follow that exact specification and guideline the entire game. HP draw whenever possible on third and long. It's fucking awful. But anyway, we're going to be doing uh, the New York Giants rebuild today. I've ranted a little bit enough. I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description, twitter.com slash bangaldesigns, uh, you know. I've been very frustrated. But we're going to be doing this New York Giants rebuild by any means necessary. This is a fantasy style rebuild. If you want to see my realistic rebuilds, they're also on this channel in a very different style. That is, you know, realistic moves only. And I do mean that, but, you know, today, anything goes in rebuilding the New York Giants. I'm excited. Fucking clown Ben Mack. Have you guys seen what he's doing with his hair? I'm going to pop it up on the screen. Like, he thinks he's a greaser all of a sudden. Like, Ben McAdoo watched the movie Grease once, was jamming out to the songs in that fucking musical, and now he's slicking back his hair like he's, I don't even know, like some just terrible mob loss. He's, he's gross. Anyway, uh, we're going to get this rebuild underway, and uh, let's go ahead and get after it. All right, guys, this is the team. God. You know what? There we go. Okay, now I'm ready. Got Chad Wheeler in now awesome you know anything's better than the fucking revolving door that is eric flowers he's awful my my entire twitter is nearly a page dedicated to the hatred of eric flowers horrific like the worst player i've ever seen i don't know what offensive tackle plays without their hands up but it's awful it's it's drop back and then don't do anything and then Oh shit, coach is telling me, yo, Eric, you probably should use your hands when you're fucking blocking. Eric's like, all right, we grab him around the neck and throw him down, or do we hold him around the back? And the coach is like, don't do that at all. Eric's like, all right, I'm going to do it anyway, every fucking play. God, it's awful. Anyway, got Justin Pugh, Weston Richburg. Those are the only two decent players on the offensive line. John Jerry, did you guys see what he did last week with like trying to ca uh, cause an offsides, he held a player in the fucking backfield on a hurry up so he couldn't get back to his, his other side of the field. What? Bobby Hart, don't even get me started. Evan Ingram, though. He's fast. There, that's the thing. Um, receiving core, we got Odell. We got Sterling Shepard. Sterling, or Sterling Shepard's like the best slot receiver in the NFL, in my opinion. Brandon Marshall, you know, in real life, hasn't been targeted all that much. I think he still can be decent. I'm probably going to look to trade him. I forget what, like, what we're here for. This is a fantasy rebuild. Eli Manning, like, he's played okay in real life besides no offensive line. Um, but we're probably going to get rid of him. Shane Vereen, same deal. Paul Perkins is kind of a disaster now. I don't know what happened to last year because he's pretty good. Uh, at free safety, we need an upgrade. Andrew Adams and Darian Thompson aren't going to cut it. We got Landon Collins. Uh, my man, Nat Berry, follows me on Twitter. Maybe you're watching this. Shout out to you. 
Um, we got DRC, Janoris Jenkins, they're sick. Uh, so the secondary overall is good besides free safety, I think. Although Darian Thompson, I think, has potential in real life. Just focusing for this rebuild, it's not going to work. We got Dalvin Tomlinson has played really well. Damon Harrison, best nose tackle in football. Olivier Vernon, probably the best 4-3 uh, defensive end in football. We also have Jason Pierre-Paul, top 10 defensive end. So this defense should be pretty good. You just got to, you know, help out the linebackers and really address this offensive line. But uh, let's go ahead and make some trades. If I can find a place to dump Eli Manning, I'm absolutely going to be able to do that, or absolutely going to want to do that. Uh, I'm saying like I'm some kind of serial killer. I'm trying to find a dumping spot for his dead body, which is, I mean, kind of what could happen in the next coming weeks if the Giants don't protect him better. I think we're going to try and trade him to the Jets, said Brandon Marshall back. Oh my goodness, what a riot this would be. All right, first trade is going to be Eli Manning, Brandon Marshall, and a third round pick for a first and a second from the Jets. It's so funny, Eli's going back. Uh, well, not back. He's going across town, which, in reality, I don't know what, even know that's an expression. He's going across the locker room, um, or across the stadium to the other locker room. And Brandon Marshall, I'm sure he's going to be very pleased to go back to the Jets with his good buddy Eli. Uh, but third round pick also, we get the first and the second from the Jets. I'm trying to get draft picks. I want to draft the quarterback. I think that was the first step uh, in the right direction. All right, with this trade, I am trading Shane Vereen, Ross Cockrell, and a third-round pick next year for one of my favorite players in the league currently, Jordan Hicks. Hook him horns. I'm a huge Texas Longhorns fan. Um, and uh, Jordan Hicks, really, really good player. And it's going to help out this linebacking core that's abysmal for the New York Giants. I thought about trading Eli Apple. And you guys, if you're following me for a long time, you know I'm not a huge Eli Apple fan. I thought he was a bad pick at the time. And I thought he was super shitty last year. And everyone disagreed with me. And finally, Eli Apple is still extremely shitty this year. And everyone's like, mm, maybe he's not the player we thought he was. It's like, no shit, idiot. Um, but no one has interest in Eli Apple, or at least the Eagles didn't, and they needed a cornerback. So I'm happy to trade Ross Cockrell. I need an upgrade at a cornerback eventually. But that is a great start with B.J. Goodson uh, and Jordan Hicks. I don't know. B.J. Goodson's not going to play. But Jordan Hicks on the team, I think, is, is fantastic. I like how... Paul Perkins' picture in this is so low quality. I don't know if you guys can tell, but look at Sterling Shepard, look at Devon Kennard, look at Orleans Darkwa, John Jerry, Dalvin Tomlinson, and then Paul Perkins is like, oh, you don't want me to come in and take a picture for, for the roster? I'll take it myself. And he got, like, paid some homeless person with a disposable camera. It's like, what is this? I don't know, but, uh, jeez. With this trade, I'm trading Jay Bromley and Romeo Aquara. Don't really need either of the room. Gabe Jackson is going to come in immediately and fill a very huge void on the offensive line. Might even play him at tackle. Um, I might even play Brad Wing, the punter at tackle, because honestly, anyone is better than Eric Flowers at that position. But we do, in all serious need, uh, seriousness, need an upgrade on the offensive line. Going to keep looking for trade pieces and hopefully make some really good trades happen. With this trade, surprised me quite a lot. Paul Perkins and DJ Fluker for Ryan Schrader straight up. He is 29, but he's also an offensive lineman, so that's really not the end of the world. 87 overall, he's going to come in right away and be an impact player for us on this offensive line. And I think these trades have been extremely beneficial thus far. We're going to play him at left tackle um, for sure. And then, I don't know, I feel like I could play Gabe Jackson at right tackle, get away with it. His uh, positions don't really matter from one offensive line position to the next, other than overall for the most part. They just play the position pretty much the same. Ryan Schrader even goes up to an 88 overall. But, um, yeah, I think I want to get some more picks. I've been trading my running backs a little, a little bit. We got Orleans Darker. We got Wayne Gallman. They should be able to do the job for us. And, uh, of course, we do need to improve at wide receiver now. Dwayne Harris is not going to cut it. Roger Lewis Jr., not going to cut it. But Davis Webb is a new starting quarterback for the Giants. Maybe he's the answer. Maybe I don't even have to draft the quarterback. That would actually be ideal. This is just going to be the team that we run with. It's not anything crazy. I figured that we had to build it um, in a different way, kind of break it down a little bit before we could build it back up into hopefully greatness. So this first season, it's going to be not great. I mean, when you replace a quarterback anytime, not that Eli is superstar Eli Manning. It's more of a, mm, um, we're, you know, it's going to take a step backwards. But the offensive line is very much improved. Bobby Hart is just sickening to look at with how bad he is, and I associate that with his on-field performance. And it's just gross. It really is. But um, I really wanted some more draft picks. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to try to get another first-round pick 
at a third somehow. So uh, I'll actually get back to you. And then we're going to simulate to the midseason mark. So right after I make the trade, if I do, we're going to meet you at the midseason mark. With this trade, it's going to be Kenya Robinson, a fifth and a fourth next year for the first round pick. One of them for the Bills. I believe that is the Rams first rounder. So uh, I'm actually quite happy to get that trade off. We don't have a third round pick this year. I could get one. It's a lot of energy and effort to do that. So we're just going to go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. Uh, can't be bothered for third round picks. We're a little bit too too baller for those. But I will see you at the midseason mark. We'll see how we're doing. So at the midseason mark, we are 2-5. and five. Pretty horrific, I would say. Although a lot of XP for Davis Webb. I wonder what he did. Maybe a player of the week somewhere in there? Can't imagine with 2-5. and five. Anyway, he's getting kind of a lot of XP. Like to see it. Like to see it a lot. I am, of course, using those XP sliders that I said in my how to do a rebuild video, if you guys want to check those out. We have Weston Richburg to re-sign. I don't know about anybody else, but it's certainly possible. Uh, Justin Pugh as well, Devon Kennard. I'll try to bring back these top three guys. I really don't have a vested interest in Orleans Darkwa. I really don't even want to bring back the, uh, Devon Kennard too badly, but uh, I do like him a lot in real life, so I probably will. All right, so Justin Pugh is back, Weston Richburg back. Uh, Devon Kennard is back, and he said, oh, I'm so happy to sign a deal and stay with such a great team, which I'm kind of a little bit regretting offering this contract to him because I don't really want a player with such a terrible mental illness on the squad because apparently he thinks his team is quite good when it isn't. I mean, the roster is okay. The record certainly indicates a different story, uh, and so does a real-life record. This is, this is not great, but we got our top three players back. We're going to simulate the playoffs, and um, hopefully we miss it by a lot so I can get a really, really top draft pick and maybe invest that into a superstar player. All right, at the end of season number one, we'd finish five and 11, unfortunately. Uh, not really doing too well, but we'll check out the stats, see how we did. Davis Webb, actually not too bad of a season, 4,000 yards, 22 touchdowns, 14 interceptions is kind of a lot, but that's somewhat expected. Orleans Darqua was fairly shitty. Evan Ingram... <laughs> We gotta put him at running back. Two rushes, 49 yards, and a touchdown. Pretty good. Receiving, Sterling Shepard led our team in catches. Uh, although we had 875 yards, three touchdowns. Odell, 1,200 plus yards, five touchdowns. Evan Ingram, seven touchdowns. Dwayne Harris at six. Like, we're kind of moving in the right direction. Ryan Schrader averaged a ton of sacks, or got a ton of sacks allowed. Uh, Bobby Hart, kind of the same deal. Defensively, though, Jordan Hicks played really well, led our team in tackles. Tackles for loss would be 19. From Damon Harrison, quarterback sacks 12 and a half from Olivier Vernon, nine and a half from JPP. Interception six from Jordan Hicks. I don't know why they don't have cornerbacks get more interceptions each year. Seems kind of off. Force fumbles three for Devon Kennard. Fumble recoveries we have two for Olivier Vernon and two from Devon Kennard. Led the team. Any defensive touchdowns? No, we didn't. Okay. Let's check out the yearly awards. Big Ben is MVP of the 13 and three uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Don't see any Giants in there. NFC Office Player of the Year goes to Dak Prescott. No Giants. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Luke Keekley. I would have thought that we'd see Jordan Hicks somewhere in there. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Davis Webb. That should be a lot of XP, as well as potentially a development trait. Evan Ingram comes in 7th place. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jared Davis. And Dalvin Tomlinson finishes at number 8. So let's go ahead and check out the XP situation. I'll spend my coach XP. Davis Webb has 46k. And normal development. They didn't give him quick. That's fairly upsetting. But uh, nevertheless, we had some XP. We got kind of a lot of it in some areas. DRC barely got any. Uh, I guess he's kind of starting to go down and overall with regression and things like that. I maybe should have looked to trade uh, him. He's 32. Damn, that's a missed opportunity. I'll, maybe we'll trade him in this offseason. I'm going to spend this XP and uh, see you guys at the offseason. Or I'm going to go there. I'll spend it. It doesn't really matter when I spend it, to be honest. Ben McAdoo hired for the Browns. Okay. Whatever. We gotta address a lot of positions, though. Sammy Watkins is a free agent. That's someone we actually will probably look to get. He'd be a really good um, addition to the tree, to the duo and make a trio of the receivers we already have. Quick development, 25 years old. I really want Sammy Watkins. I really hate how this is a thing now. They just... Players reject contracts even when I'm in the lead. Like, I have... I have no idea. It's just random luck, it seems. Sammy Watkins goes to the Cardinals. Oh, I guess they outbid me without me knowing about it? Is that a thing that's been happening? 
I don't I don't even know what I'm supposed to do about that. Anyway, we didn't get Sammy Watkins, as you can see. Since some people freak out about combine grades, Nate Shepard, uh, I usually don't show any of this, but 8.0 combine grade, pretty high. This Kadarius fellow seems pretty good. Kadarius. Okay. Alright, so in the draft we have the fourth overall pick. I'm not going to trade up or anything. I'm comfortable there. We also have the 14th and the 15th in the first round. Those are our first round picks. We also have the 36th overall pick in the draft as well as the 46th. So just go ahead and simulate to our pick. See who's available. Make some assessments off that. And a player I didn't expect to be on the board is currently still on the board. I'm going to be taking Banks Borum here. He's a 3-4 pass rusher, uh, but I think he's more versatile than that, as you can see with like hit power and block shed and just overall athleticism. So I feel like I can play him anywhere on the field. I think he's a tremendous all-around player. Great combine, great top three skills. I think great player, and clearly he is the number one player in the entire class. We've drafted him at number four. He has quick development. He's an 84 overall. You can take that to the Banks. 88 speed, 80 tackle, 86 block shot, 87 hit power, 87 finesse move, 84 power move, 74 play rec, 82 pursuit. There's really nothing that this guy can't do um, except for cover that well. But, I mean, we can really put him anywhere on the field and just have him wreak havoc. With my next pick, I'm going to be taking Rashawn Ream out of Ole Miss. Receiver, 6'2", I think uh, is a really great complementary player to the players we already have. Uh, in New York with Odell and Sterling Shepard a bit on the smaller side. Rashawn Raheem going to add some height. Still very fast. 4-4 four, four, four speed. Good top three skills. Welcome to the team. 81 overall. And he is insane. He's ranked number five in the class. We obviously took him at 14. Quick development again. 91 speed. 85 route running. 84 catching. 87 excel. 86 catching traffic. 90 spectacular catch. 94 jumping. 76 awareness. The awareness and play recs have been really high for these players that we're drafting. Which I usually don't love. 84 release. He can do it all, though. And we have another pick. And I was in between these two running backs. I didn't really expect Sean Barkley to be on the board. And he is pretty good. He's a one-cut style back, but I think I'm leaning more or leaning more towards Nate Bird because he's a little bit faster. Uh, A-minus carrying, B-plus aloofness, B-minus juke move, 4-3 flat speed, extremely agile. Um, and we just, you know, he's a peacock. We gotta let him fly. Nate Bird. He's ranked 23rd in the class although he's extremely good in a lot of areas. 97 speed, 94 excel, 91 carrying, 82 ball carry vision, 78 spin, 80 juke. He is a 79 overall. He can't really truck or uh, stiff arm. But 57 awareness I like because we can boost that. He's going to be an extremely high overall in year one. So I think this draft has been phenomenal so far, addressing both sides of the ball. And the offensive line is already decent, so we just need to make small adjustments and upgrades here and there to further... Uh, Oh, Sean Barkley's still on the board. Not going to be taking him, though. I think I'm just going to trade this pick down for a first runner next year if I can. Bengals are offering. So are the Colts. I think the Saints usually have uh, Drew Brees traded away. I'm just going to do that. He was in free agency, not traded away. So I think if I just trade that pick to the Saints, it should be a very high overall pick next year. And then maybe if I can get a first runner with this pick, although I highly doubt there will be one offered. So I'm just deciding to go after a proven talent for dirt cheap, a second this year as well as a fifth and a seventh next year for Zach Martin from the Dallas Cowboys, 99 overall right guard. We can play him at left tackle. That's where I plan on playing him. Going to be absolutely insane there, 99 overall, I would imagine. So uh, things are looking really, really good. This offseason was solid. Going to be taking Fillimore Rofe with this pick. Went to Yale, so he's no, you know he's smart. Probably. <laughs> really good top three skills, insane combine, really, really insane combine. I think another really quality linebacker being added to the team here in Fillmore Rofe. Welcome to the team. He's ranked number 43. We took him at 177 overall, quick development, 87 speed, insanely fast, or fast, flies around the field. Um, excellent pick here. I think this draft is one of the best that I've had, to be honest, and it should continue to get better. Ooh, another fourth? Okay. Trading down this fourth rounder for a third next year. And then hopefully my last two picks of the draft are absolute bangers. I have two players in mind. I think they're going to be. Hopefully they just are on the board when I'm picking. First up, I'm taking Dalton Cave out of Central Michigan. B plus impact block, B minus run block, C plus pass block. Uh, very good player. But he's not actually at the top of my list right now. I'm going to be taking Tyra Rogers just in case. A playmaker out of UCLA. Incredible top three skills in combine. 
he's actually going to fill a need at free safety immediately if he's good, can come in and play. It's an excellent pick, 68 overall. We drafted him at 164, almost 100 picks later. 92 speed, 76 zone, low play rec, high hit power, 87. He is really, really good. Awareness, I think, will be probably in the 50s. Um, it's 62. That's all right. He's going to come in and start immediately at free safety. That's my pick. I wish he had higher development. And if like we don't really need the tackle as much, but if he's still there, I mean, it's good value. I maybe can slide him inside. I don't really know what I'm going to do with him if he's still available. I just couldn't risk um, that safety going in there. He was not available. So we're just going to be taking a shot in the dark here. Uh, might as well take a running back. I don't know. Who looks good here? Pretty much nobody, if I'm being honest. Uh, maybe I'll take a cornerback for depth. Ali Malone, welcome to the team. 67 overall. Uh, he's, you know, wasn't supposed to be good, so I'm fine with that. But incredible draft overall. Extremely satisfied. Okay, so I know Reem was an 81. He's actually an 83 currently, a wide receiver number two. Uh, which I'll take... You know, very, very happy with that selection. I want to check out that running back. I can't. I have no idea where he was, uh, he was drafted. I have absolutely no idea. But uh, Ryan Schrader is down an overall one as he approaches 30. Or he is 30 now. So we're going to move him back to right tackle. And Zach Martin will play left. And hopefully this is the best offensive line uh, that we can possibly put out there. I think it's a very, very good one. And, um, you know, hopefully they continue to get better. And Zach Martin should be... A great book a uh, bookend over there at left tackle. It didn't save. Shoot. I'm gonna upgrade these players though, and uh, I will get back to you guys after that. So here is the team. I think you guys know mostly everyone who we have. So you know, some decent upgrades here and there. I think I might try to trade DRC before I simulate, but otherwise I will just probably see you guys at the midseason mark. Literally, no one wants DRC. I totally lost my window. All right, so at the midseason mark, we are 4-3, and three, obviously significantly better than we were last year. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade our team. We've got to re-sign Zach Martin, though, and probably a few other significant players. In the meantime, Odell, Lennon Collins, Jordan Hicks, DRC, I guess, 77 zone. Well, geez. I should have traded him. I, I made a mistake. All right, so I brought back Jordan Hicks, Lennon Collins, Odell, and Zach Martin. I'll address DRC at a later date. Just no real desire for that right now but uh, i'm gonna go ahead and upgrade our players and i'll see you guys for the playoffs if we make it we are currently in the lead but i mean there's no telling what could happen in madden sim all right so we would make the playoffs we're in the wild card spot actually against the green bay packers we finished nine six and one one tie ahead of the dallas cowboys we'll check out the stats see how we got there davis webb uh major improvements in terms of uh yardage and touchdowns alone 19 picks is far too many I will say rushing Nate Bird, pretty good season, 1200 yards, eight touchdowns. Receiving Rashawn Raheem, led our team in catches 89, 1000 yards, six touchdowns. Odell over 1000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Sterling Shepard nearly 1000 yards in the slot, eight touchdowns. Evan Ingram 800 yards and eight touchdowns. We're really getting the ball around here. Uh, offensive line held together pretty well. Defensively, Jordan Hicks 127 tackles on the team. Banks Borum had 121 tackles for loss, 12 for both Dalvin Tomlinson and Damon Harrison on that defensive line. Quarterback sacks, we have 12 and a half for uh, JPP, 10 and a half for OV, six for Damon Harrison, five and a half for Dalvin Tomlinson, four and a half for rookie Banks Borum. Interceptions, we have three from DRC, two from Banks Borum, two from a number of other players. Force fumbles, I see four from somebody, it's JPP. He also had three recoveries. Don't know how he picked it up with those hands. They're mangled. Touchdowns, none. Check out awards, hopefully someone won some kind of rookie of the year. Tom Brady wins MVP. Davis Webb, number five. That's interesting. NFC Office Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. Davis Webb at number four. Defense Player of the Year goes to KJ Wright. No Giants. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Nate Bird. That's what I like to see. Rashawn Ream at number four. Show me our safety. No, Banks Borum got it. Okay, I'll take that. That's even better, honestly. Um, he's an 86 overall now. Tyrone Rodgers is a 75 overall. He comes to number six. And then somebody else down there at the bottom at dead last. But, I mean, 10 is not dead last. It's just, like, dead last of the top 10. So we have some XP to work with. Nate Bird. Still quick development only. Uh, plus 17,000 XP for Rookie of the Year. Defensively, Banks Forum. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he would go up to Superstar. I don't know. He got 22,000 XP. Who got a ton of XP? I think we had a cornerback that we drafted. Oh, I guess he didn't win, so why would he? 
Uh, Rogers didn't really get all that much XP, which was kind of upsetting. We might have to replace him in the draft, but I'm going to spend this XP and then um, see you guys back here in a moment. Also, it's notable, Gabe Jackson made the Pro Bowl and got granted Superstar Development. So it is possible. I, I didn't even know that. It's just kind of a uh, uh, thought, but no, he got it. And also, I guess, I think I upgraded plus seven run block just now. So yeah, it was me. All right, playoff time. I have upgraded most of our players here. In fact, it looks like all of them. So I've done well. At MetLife Stadium somehow. Seems like we probably shouldn't have um, home field advantage, but we do because we won the division. And I guess the Packers did not. 90 overall against 89 overall. But if we win this game... I'm sure the overall will go up as it usually does. Um, but here we go. In the playoffs, at home, let's take home the W. All right, here we go. Very close game, 15-14 to 14, now, 21-15 as we get into the second half here. 27-15, 27-18. Please, can we do something? 30-18. Davis Webb lead us. 30-24. to 24. We score 31-30. And we managed to sneak out a victory over the Green Bay Packers in a snowy, snowy East Rutherford, New Jersey at MetLife. I don't know how we did that. But now we are headed into the divisional round against, I don't even know who. Should be a good game regardless. So it looks like we're matched up against the Atlanta Falcons here in the divisional. Um, Davis Webb has some XP. I guess I'll use that. And um, we'll go ahead and spend it on medium accuracy as well as awareness, get him up to an 87 overall, and then hop into this game against the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, hopefully we get the job done. We are indeed improved up to a 92 overall. I don't know why it does that. It makes it look like I'm cheating in some fashion, but I'm not, I really don't care. Um, there's no point in doing that, but here we go against the Atlanta Falcons. Hopefully we can pull it out. Not off to a great start here in Atlanta as we've just scored our first points down 20 to seven, I guess 20 to 14 before halftime. We're kind of pulling it back a little bit here. But uh, things are slipping away from the Falcons. Can we capitalize? Uh, no, we cannot, as the final score will indeed be 29-14. to 14. Unfortunately, we cannot pull this one out. But the divisional round, after um, just sneaking into the playoffs with nine wins, is not terrible. Could have been way worse. But Season 3, I expect gigantic things. Davis Webb to even take the next step. And uh, we got a bunch of young players who are really good, really talented. And I have nothing but high hopes and high expectations. Let's go ahead and advance the offseason. Maybe we can bring in a free agent or two. That can kind of help us out a little bit. Okay, so regression is hitting us pretty hard. Janoris Jenkins, as you can see, is just getting destroyed by regression. DRC is an 81 overall. 81 overall. As you can see, regression has hit him in a large way. As he is 33 years old. No one really wants him. I'm not going to re-sign him. We need to get a whole new group of cornerbacks. Like, I don't even know if we can trust Janoris. We can't worry. Janoris, I want to be my third cornerback. That's the goal. That is the goal. If I can do that, I think we're going to be set. Hopefully, Jalen Ramsey or somebody's here in free agency that we can go ahead and snag. Vic Beasley, don't need him. Ha Ha Clinton Dix can come in and be an immediate upgrade over that Rodgers fellow that we drafted. I don't really want him, though. Ah, yes, I do. I totally do. Totally do. All right, we got HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix. He's going to come in, start immediately. Immediate upgrade over over Tyrone Rogers here, who isn't bad. It's just like he's a developmental player, someone that I don't really want for the win now kind of stage. Eli Apple, I need to trade. I could probably do, I mean, like, dude, the, the regressing is so tough. Even Damon Harrison is regressing in a big way. JPP, I think, is regressing in a big way. He is. Maybe even Olivier Vernon is a bit younger, but uh, no, he's not regressing. That's cool, but like for the most part, a lot of players are. It's tough. I can trade Devon Kennard. I can trade B.J. Goodson, but I need to make some trades. We need cornerbacks. I feel like that's the one major weakness of this team now, but otherwise, I think we should be fine. Now, I don't know how his combine grade is only a 7.9. I think it's because it's like some of the, the things aren't high enough. Like Maybe he's not the fastest ever. Um, and maybe that's how you get points towards whatever the attributes are. But he's first in every single category. He's 6'3". His top three skills are good. If I can draft Antoine Murdoch, I'm definitely going to do that. I have a top 10 pick. So I'm going to have to trade up. I'm going to have to trade up to get him. 
All right, with this trade, I am trading uh, my two first round picks this year in Eli Apple to get the second overall pick from the Colts, and hopefully that cornerback is available. All right, Redskins, don't fuck me. Okay, we're good. We're golden, actually. Right, he's on the board. Here we go. Antoine Murdoch. Amazing top three skills in combine. Here we go. 83 overall, ranked number three in the entire draft. We drafted him number two, 94 speed, 85 man, 81 zone. Play rec is low. We can boost that easily. Acceleration high, agility high, press high. I mean, Antoine Murdoch looks like the complete package besides, I guess, block shedding and hit power. But he's 6'3". I mean, he's like, he's the guy. Good pick. All right, now with my picks, I'm going to try and trade for some players. Because there's no really, there's not really anyone that I want to draft. So I'm going to take my second, my third, and my first next year and see if I can find a cornerback that uh, would join our team. All really depends. Chris Harris it is. Okay. The second, the third, and the first next year for Chris Harris Jr., 95 overall cornerback. And I think uh, suddenly we went from a super weak cornerback group in Eli Apple and a super old DRC in uh, Janoris Jenkins to one of the top cornerback groups in the league with now Janoris Jenkins and that rookie cornerback that's going to start, I think, over Janoris Jenkins even. Uh, and we can just skip the draft. It doesn't really matter at this point. And now Chris Harris Jr. I mean, it's a... It's a good setup we have going on. All right, this is going to be the team for season number three. It's looking really solid overall. I might just go out and do what I did last year and sign a fullback in the first week of pre uh, preseason. But you guys saw the defense earlier. I'll flash it again here. Uh, it looks pretty solid overall. I still have Devon Kennard, BJ Goodson. Didn't trade any of those guys. But now we just have a really, really good cornerback group. And I'll spend XP uh, after I get that fullback. And I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. See how we're doing. Fisher Saunders, rookie, 85 overall. Welcome to the team. <laughs> CJ Morrison, another rookie, 85 overall fullback. Why not? Take all these undrafted rookie free agents that are 85 overall, even if it is just fullback. We'll have a, a controversy. Who do we start? Here we are at the midseason mark, 7 and 0. Am I going to see the first undefeated season? in Madden 18 rebuild history for me. It's quite possible, and I know Jerome does this as well. He shows that he doesn't cheat, and I've talked about this min... Nope, almost said millions. I've definitely haven't done it that many times. I talked about it half a dozen to a dozen times for being legitimate. I don't fake anything. It is what it is. Obviously, I do not force wins. That says home. Some people think that's whatever when they read it quick. It's a bye week. You can't win or lose a bye week. Well, you can have productive bye weeks, whatever. Um, we have some XP to use. I'm going to use that. I'm going to upgrade, and I will see you guys at the end of the season. Well, actually, no. I'll show you guys the upgraded team first. I want to spend this coach XP, though. All right, so this is the team, and the rookies have really carried... Well, not rookies, but our draft picks have really carried, I think, a lot of this team. You look at this running back. You look at Nate Bird. He's a 90 overall, just in his uh, his second year. You look at uh, Rashawn Ream, 87 overall slash 86 overall. He's also in his second year. I mean, Evan Ingram, we didn't draft, but kind of, you get the point. We got Banks Borum here, 92 overall. He's in his second year. We have uh, Fillimore Rofe, second year, 84 overall. I mean, we got some really good players. And uh, this is the team, if you were curious, if you cared. And um, I really doubt we're going to go undefeated. It just never happens. But there's always hope. I will see you guys for the playoffs. We're definitely going to get a first round by as it stands right now, so I guess I'll see you for the divisional. Alright, here we go. This is my first experience with it. I haven't seen the record, obviously. We finished 13-3. and three. I knew it was too good to be true with the undefeated season. Let's see who we lost to. That'll be something cool to see. Let's see who we lost to. Regular season, 7-0. and um, And 8-0. Oh, hold on, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10. We finished 10 and 0. Lost to the Packers in a very, very close game. Uh, beat the Bears. Destroyed by the Cowboys. And then lost a pretty close game to the Falcons as uh, they beat us in the playoffs last year. But a really, really good season. We'll go ahead and check out the stats. Sometimes I forget to do that when we make the playoffs. But Davis Webb, 4,100 yards, 38 touchdowns. Still 14 interceptions, dude. He's still throwing a lot of picks. Rushing. Nate Bird is a beast. Ton of yards, 13.50, eight touchdowns. Wayne Gallman at 11 touchdowns as the backup. Receiving Odell, 90 catches, 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. Rashawn Ream, 761 yards, nine touchdowns. Sterling Shepard, nearly 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns. Evan Ingram, 
600 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, Davis Webb getting a lot of guys involved. Offensive line wasn't amazing. Uh, Jordan Hicks led our team in tackles yet again. Tackles for loss would be 14 from Damon Harrison, 8 from Olivier Vernon, quarterback sacks, 10 from Olivier Vernon, 9.5 for Damon Harrison, 9.5 for Jason, uh, Jason Pierre Paul, 6.5 Dalvin Tomlin. So we had a number of players get a lot of sacks. Interceptions, 4 for Landon Collins, 3 for both Jordan Hicks, rookie Antoine Murdoch, and Janoris Jenkins. Like to see it. Four fumbles, we have two from Jordan Hicks and Jason Pierre-Paul. They both led our team in recoveries as well with the same numbers. Defensive touchdowns, again, none. We'll check out awards, though. Maybe we want something. Matt Ryan wins MVP. Davis Webb at number five. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Davis Webb moves up to three. He was four last year, if I recall. Defensive Player of the Year does go to Jordan Hicks, though. That should be a lot of XP, I hope. Banks Borum at number seven in his second year. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Eldrin George. I'm hoping that our man Antoine, last name, is here. He is an Antoine Murdoch, number three, last name, whatever. I forgot what it was. I'm not mad. But uh, we do have a lot of XP, I would guess. Uh, not as much as I thought, but we have a decent amount. How about defensively? How about my man Antoine here? Not really any at all. Okay, I'm going to use this XP, and hopefully we can beat the Rams in the wild card. We finished 13-3. How the fuck are we in the wild card round of the playoffs? That's absolutely ridiculous. Bunch of teams went 13-3. and I guess that's kind of how it... How it works and we just didn't have the most yards or something, I don't know. But yeah, we are in the wild card, that kind of sucks. But as I said before, I'm going to use this XP. Coach XP as well. Very important that you guys use that if you don't. Alright, this is the team that we're rocking with though. Davis Webb playing up to a 94 overall, Nate Bird up to a 92. I mean, the team is just firing all cylinders. Hopefully we can actually come out here and do well enough and actually uh, beat the Rams, advance to the Divisional, and uh of the championship series and so on win the Super Bowl 94 overall Rams are an 84 overall I swear to God dude I swear the Rams beat us all right looks like it's pretty much a whitewash so far 16 nothing as the Rams finally do it on the board of the field goal and then a touchdown and a missed extra point 16 to 9 can we finish this game please I don't like this score a touchdown all right whatever 16 to 12 is the final score as we beat the Rams and a poor game overall, it looked like. But we're advancing to the divisional. Give me the Falcons. Let's smack them. Get our revenge. Head to the championship series. Not the actual NFL championship. We got our wish. Uh, no one really to upgrade. So we are going straight into this game. Two 13 and 3 teams. We're a 95 overall. They're a 91 overall. Let's smack them. Although we barely beat the Rams. Hopefully, we can come out here and get the job done. All right, here we go. Back in the same place we lost last year, scoring a touchdown and missing the extra point, as that always happens in simulation for some reason. 13-7, to 14-13. We're losing on an extra point. 16-20, to 19-20. If this one point comes back to bite us, I'm going to be super, super disappointed. 33-19. Please, can we score? We can. 33-25. Coming down the field, and it's turnover, and we lose. Gonna finish 33 to 25, I believe the final score was. Yeah, and we're gonna do one more season, and uh, hopefully we should actually get the job done. We're 95 overall, and we can barely beat the Rams, and we lose to the Falcons in the divisional. It's upsetting. 99 offense, 99 defense, and we can't win. All right, Chris Harris Jr. is a free agent. We got to bring him back for sure. Who else here? Sterling Shepard. C.J. Morrison is one of our fullbacks we signed. We can, I mean, just the attributes look nearly identical besides pass block. We're going to bring back Fisher Saunders, but let's go ahead and bring back everybody. Chris Harris Jr., of course, regressing. I had to go out and trade for someone who is uh, 31. Awesome. All right, so we brought back Brad Wing, uh, Fisher Saunders, Sterling Shepard, and Chris Harris Jr. B.J. Goodson wanted to play for a new team. I don't really care. He doesn't start anyway. It does not matter to me. Let's go ahead and advance to the next week. We don't really have much cap room, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything in free agency. Oh, but boy, would I like to. Jalen Ramsey's here. Oh, super, super unfortunate that we don't have the cap room. Only 3.8 mil. There's no way I can put in an offer for him. Oh, we actually can. I increase the years, amp up the price. There's a chance we can get Jalen Ramsey. $24 in cap room. I'm down. 36 total points. 
Mm, some tells me we won't be signing Jalen Ramsey, but you never know. Yeah, he, he didn't like it too much. That's all right. That's fine with me. Let's simulate to the draft. I'm looking at our team, and like I guess the one position we could really improve is either defensive tackle or left end. I mean, left outside linebacker, I think we're fine. We got some young players. And uh, maybe a re Oh, that's what we need. We need a receiver. Let me see if I can get a fourth receiver and a defensive tackle or defensive end, maybe. All right, so we traded Tyrone Rodgers a fourth and a third for Cam Meredith from the Bears. 87 overall. He's still pretty young. He's going to be a huge player in our receiving core. We didn't even really need him. 3.8 million cap room. I would really like to get a better defensive tackle, which would involve trading Dalvin Tomlinson. But more than likely, I would probably just trade Damon Harrison since he is a bit older. I guess if we're in our last season, probably use him while he's still at his best. We'll trade Dalvin Tomlinson and try to get a stud defensive tackle. Geno Atkins comes to mind. 87, he's regressing a lot. I want somebody a little bit better, I think. All right, here we go. Dalvin Tomlinson, a second and a second next year for Leonard Williams, who's going to play defensive tackle for us, of course. And uh, I'm super excited with that trade. Leonard Williams is a beast. So now that defensive line definitely looks a little bit more scary with Leonard Williams sitting at a 94 overall. And we could probably even transition to a 4-3, or excuse me, a 3-4, and uh, play a little bit better. Damon Harrison as a nose, Leonard Williams as a 3-4 defensive end, OV as a 3-4 defensive end, trade JPP for a middle linebacker. Yes, that's actually the move. I'm doing that. I'm doing that for sure. With this trade, we went ahead and traded a first next year, a third next year, and Jason Pierre-Paul for Jared Davis, 91 overall middle linebacker for the Detroit Lions. And that's actually an upgrade currently over Jordan Hicks as overall stand. I'd rather have, well, actually, I guess they're the same. I thought Jordan Hicks was like an 88. Whatever, I will take it. Like, we had a sick team. We're going to transition into a 3-4. Leonard Williams will move back to left end. This is a stellar squad, and I don't know why I decided to change schemes halfway through, but or 90% through, but we're doing it. Cam Meredith has 28k XP. Okay. All right, so this is the team for season number three. It looks really, really good, I think, overall. Receiving core is amazing, especially with Evan Ingram there at tight end. Offensive line is super solid. Defense, defensive line is, I think, one of the best in the entire NFL. It says we have a B- minus for Damon Harrison, but no way. Cornerbacks are insane. We're going to move Antoine Murdoch into the uh, starting role. Landon Collins, we got Ha-Ha Clinton Dix. Look at this linebacking core. It's insane. And we got the draft. I'm not doing it. I'll see you guys at the midseason mark of season number four and the final season. So whatever happens, happens. Here we go. Midseason mark, we are 6-1. and one. Davis Webb throwing for 459 yards over there in the bottom left. You guys probably can't read most of that. Maybe some of it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use this XP, some of that coach XP. I don't even know what I'll be able to purchase. But uh, we're going to do it regardless. Upgrade our team, and I'll show you guys the upgraded team before simulating to the playoffs. So this is the team. Uh, Cam Meredith is trying to snake into the starting lineup. I'm just not having it. Sterling Shepard will play the slot. Here's the offensive line. There's Evan Ingram. Here's the defense. I mean, it's just it is just spectacular. Banks Warm is a it's a Banks beast. Probably gonna have a ton of sacks in the season. Murdoch is in the starting lineup now. We're six and one. We're headed to the playoffs, and uh, hopefully we get the uh, round one by wild card by. We get to play in the divisional. We as always do in this rebuild, you know, win a playoff game, and we lose one, so at least if we lose now, we'll lose in the conference championship and not the divisional. Okay, there we go. There we go. First round by. Finished 14-2, and two, even better than last year. Check out the stats. Davis Webb, 5,100 yards, 36 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. I think those two numbers are identical as to last year. Nate Bird is a beast, nearly 1,500 yards, 18 touchdowns on the ground. Wayne Gallman, nine touchdowns as well. Odell, 110 catches, 1,500 yards, 7 TDs. No double-digit touchdowns, but we spread the ball out a lot. Rashawn Ream, 916 yards, 6 touchdowns. Sterling Shepard, 910 yards, 9 touchdowns. Cam Meredith really played well. Blocking, offensive line, for the most part, held together. Defensively, Jordan Hicks was the only triple-digit tackler with 125. Tacklers for loss would be 7 from Olivier Vernon and somebody else. Quarterback sacks, we have 14 from OV. Uh, fewer sacks, but... It's okay. We got good defense. Six picks from Jordan Hicks. Ooh, am I, am I rhyming there? Three from Antoine Murdoch. Three from Chris Harris Jr. Force fumbles. Uh, two from Banks Borum and Fillmore Rofe, our outside linebackers on the team. We see more defensive touchdowns this year. Jordan Hicks and Antoine Murdoch are those guys. 
Aaron Rodgers wins MVP of the 9 6 and 1 Green Bay Packers. It should have been Davis Webb. Come on. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. Davis Webb at number three. There he is. Nate Bird at number eight. Defense Player of the Year goes to Jordan Hicks. There we go. Rookies don't really matter. I don't expect to see anybody. We don't get anybody. But uh, we're going to go ahead and use some of this XP. We should have a lot of it. I do have Coach XP. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. But I'm going to spend this and um, see you guys in the divisional against the Atlanta Falcons. Green Bay Packers, MVP Aaron Rodgers. Okay, pumped for that one. All right, this is the team. It is looking nice. It is looking good. Hopefully, we can come out here and get a W um, in East Rutherford, New Jersey versus the Green Bay Packers at MetLife. Here we go. 96 overall to their 93. I wish I could say it's a done deal. It's totally not. It's anyone's ball game. All right, looks like we should be able to, to win this one near the end of it 40 to 17 now 40 to 23 40 to 30 geez can we end it 43 37 that was way closer than it should have been as the mustached macho man Aaron Rodgers uh came back a little bit to make it a close one 431 yards and four touchdowns on our defense it's absolutely ridiculous but we do end up getting the win we're advancing to the conference championship I want it to be the Falcons I want to beat the Falcons show me the Falcons Conference championship against the 14 and 2 Atlanta Falcons. This was my wish. I got what I wanted. 96 overall against 96 overall. We're 0 and 2 against the Falcons in the playoffs in this series. And I guess 0 and 3 if you count the game that we saw at the end of one of those seasons. Here we go. Can the Giants beat the Falcons? My guess is no. Here we go. It's a different story. We're at MetLife this time. We're at our home. But it's not going well. We're down 14 to 3, 21 to 3. 28-3. Oh, oh my goodness. 28-3 against the Falcons, please. It'd be too good. It would be way too good. 28-17. Oh, no. 35-17 is your final score. As we made it to the conference championship and we lose to the Falcons again. It is what it is, but that's going to do it for the rebuild deal, guys. I think it was actually pretty successful. I had a great time doing it. Obviously, it's going to be more fun when you're doing your favorite team. But uh, hopefully more... You know, regularly scheduled videos with Madden and all that once my schedule eases up a little bit. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.